Hi, my name is Martin Perhiniak. Welcome back to the digital art series here on PSD Touch Plus. Today I'm going to talk about perspective. First of all, why is it important to use perspective in your paintings? Whenever we are drawing, we are drawing in two dimensions on a flat surface, but we would like to simulate three dimensions. And to be able to show depth and scale, we need to use perspective. In this tutorial, I don't want to spend too much time on the theory. I just would like to help you to learn about the tools that you can use in Photoshop to quickly get used to working with perspective for your artwork. If you want to learn more about perspective and how to construct drawings in perspective, you can find some really useful tutorials on PSD Touch Plus. For example, this one, How to Draw with Perspective from Gavin. Uh, this is a really useful tutorial and you can easily find it if you search for perspective here in the, on the top right corner on the PSD Touch Plus website. So if you are interested in this topic and you have more time, you can find other tutorials. But as I said, I would like to show you quickly the tools that we need. I press Command N or Control N on PC uh, to create a new document. And this document will be a thousand by thousand pixels, uh, pixel size. And I just create this document quickly. Okay. Now, first of all, what you need for perspective is a horizon. I just use uh, the vector shapes and I selected the line tool. It's set to one pixel size and my color is set to black. And here on the top left, I also have the shape layers option selected, which will create a separate shape layer for this line. Um, I can decide where I would like to put my horizon. I will put it somewhere here in the middle. So that is my horizon line. And then I'm going to set a vanishing point. And for that, I just select this tool, the ellipse tool, and I click somewhere on the horizon. I hold down Alt and Shift, and I create a point like this. Alt and Shift helps me to draw a perfect circle centered on the line. So let's say that's my vanishing point. What does the vanishing point mean? It means that all the lines in my drawing will converge into that point. So just to show you, I'm going to draw a couple of more lines and all the lines in my drawing should be leading or meeting up in that point. So no matter where they start, they will always meet in the vanishing point. And I'm not really accurate with this drawing now. This is just a, a, an example. Okay, so let's say I have several lines here now meeting in the same point okay and if I start drawing something and I'm now going to change the weight of my of the line tool to three pixels just to make it a bit more visible if I start drawing I can follow the horizon so make a line parallel to the horizon and then follow these lines here on the bottom and I can easily start creating something like a box following these lines and it will be a 3D shape okay something like this I can even finish with these lines in the background and I already have roughly accurate 3D shape following this vanishing point this is called one point perspective. So once again, let me write this down. This is the horizon. Okay, so that line is the horizon. And that point is the vanishing point. We can call it VP1. And now that we know what we need for perspective, we can create a vanishing point custom shape, which we can easily use later on in other examples to help to set up perspective for a new scene. So let me do that now. I'm going to create another new document, the same size, it doesn't really matter. And then I select again the line tool 
I set the line weight to one pixel and uh, I still have the shape layers option selected and I'm going to draw a line here in the middle if you hold down shift you can draw a vertical line a straight vertical line okay so there's my line then I use command T or control T on PC to select that line with free transform option and then here on the W value which is the width I will change the percentage to 10% and then I press enter and enter again so I reduced the width of this line then I use again command T and I'm going to select this point here on the left so this point at the bottom which is going to be used as the base of the rotation this is called the reference point so I set the reference point in the middle at the bottom and then I'm going to type in two degrees that's the angle option here on the top and I type in two degrees and I press enter and enter again so what I did is now with free transform I turned this line two degrees to the right so clockwise while keeping the bottom end point in the same location so it was rotating around this point here in the middle there is an option in Photoshop which can easily repeat the same transformation on the same object and it's called again it's under the transform option because we have a path selected it's called transform path so edit transform path if I click on again it will do the same thing again so keeping still the base point and just rotating the line two degrees to the right now if you hold down alt while you select this option so if you go to edit transform path again and you hold down alt or option on the keyboard it will not only repeat the transformation but it will also copy that selected line you will see why it's, it's important for us but before I continue I would like to also point out that if you create a custom keyboard shortcut for this option and what I use for it is command shift T then if you just simply use the keyboard shortcut command shift T and add the alt to it so command alt shift T and press that several times I'm holding down the three keys command alt and shift and I just pressing T that will make it really simple to add as many lines as you want to the same custom shape by just simply repeating the same transformation again and again but at the same time copying the lines so not just repeating the transformation but also copying them if you don't know how to create custom keyboard shortcuts I show you quickly it's under edit keyboard shortcuts and here you can go to edit you find the option which is the again option you click on it and just simply press command shift T or control shift T on PC after that you just need to click on accept and then click on OK so I continue using the keyboard shortcut remember not just command shift T because that will repeat the transformation without duplicating the item I hold down also alt so command alt shift T and I'm pressing it several times and until I get uh, 360 degrees of this line okay and I would like to also point out that if you want to keep all these lines in the same vector mask so in one shape layer then you have to have this option also selected here on the top which is called add to shape area so if you see lots of layers here on the right then it's not a problem but it's better to have this option selected so add to shape area on the top before you start duplicating the lines because that will keep all of the lines in one layer and it's easier also to save it as a custom shape if you use this option now we have all the lines and this is what I'm going to use so if I zoom closer this is actually the vanishing point here in the middle and these are all the lines that we are going to use as guides to set up our perspective and by the way it is also good to hypnotize someone if you use something like this and you zoom in and out it's quite interesting effect 
<laughs> I just want to make sure that you don't take me too seriously because I would like to make these tutorials fun, not just useful to learn from. So I hope I can entertain you. So <laughs> we have this shape and I would like to say 